Good day everyone, last week 999 went up against 035 and a lot of you left comments wishing that 999 could have killed 035. Well I want to keep you happy and this lovely user left a comment that, with their permission, I have turned into an alternate ending version. Skip the story if you want to go straight to the ending, otherwise let's get started. The man wearing the mask limped his way down the corridor following the exit signs. The corrosive fluids eating away at his flesh were agonizing. He wanted to stop, but a voice in his head commanded him forwards. They reached a locked door. Something forced his hand up to the mask. His skin bubbled as he collected fresh acid in his palm before spreading it across the ID card panel. A few sparks and the potent smell of burning plastic and metal, and the door swung open. What greeted him was simply another storage closet. The dim light of the corridor failed to fully illuminate the room, but the man with the mask looked briefly for something that could help him with the thing controlling him. He saw a wooden cleaning brush and a mop handle. Maybe he could use those to pry the- Move, puppet. The dying man lurched away from the storage closet back into the hallway. All submit eventually. You will too. From the observation booth, a frustrated Dr. Stanford watched as SCP-035 took D-2934 further through the mocked-up containment site. So far, their experiment was confirming his suspicions. The documentation on SCP-035 was wrong. It suggested immediate brain death, which was only correct in most cases. Strong-willed victims had the ability to slow down the process. Inevitably though, SCP-035 always wins the battle of the wills. He took a sip of tea. Sadly, this cup was inferior compared to his old favourite one. The old one had been destroyed during that incident with SCP-096. A shame. What a thrilling and incredible experience that had all been. Not many could say they had died and come back. Less still could say they survived an attack from SCP-096. Dr. Stanford pressed the intercom button in front of him. Begin stage two. The man found the will to walk a different way, and the voices began screaming in his head again. Wrong way, puppet. Follow the signs. Do as I command, and your suffering will end sooner. D2934 felt acid beginning to run over his teeth, and screamed as he felt his gums beginning to liquefy. Do as I command. The man buckled and begrudgingly turned to head back towards the previous corridor. Not one more turn and two locked doors later, the pair entered a testing room of sorts, high concrete walls topped with bright lights and cameras. Leave this place. Now, puppet. A box descended from the ceiling, and from within, a gelatinous orange mass rolled out over the top. It pulsated on the ground, swaying from side to side, looking at the pair before slowly approaching them. D-2934 stretched out his scarred, burned hand towards the creature. No, do not touch it, puppet. D-2934 winced as more acid began to strip the flesh from his chest. The gelatinous mass extended a pseudopod, touched D-2934, and everything turned black. D-2934 awoke on the floor. The mask was still on his face, but the orange creature had covered him from head to foot, the mask included. He tried to move, but it was impossible. The agony was gone. He felt no pain. In fact, he felt happy and at peace. Excruciating pain suddenly riddled his body again, and he felt fresh acid washing down his throat, stripping the flesh from his esophagus. He is mine. Release him. He felt the cool slime begin to slide over his skeletonized chin, it was slowly prying the mask off of his face. As his skin ripped, the slime quickly covered the tears, softening the pain. The voices in his head were still there, demanding his compliance, threatening pain and suffering, but they were beginning to fade. D2934 forced a hand up and threw the mask, grabbed the mask and ripped it from him. The creature quickly covered his destroyed face. D2934 dropped the mask to the floor as he began to go into shock. The creature held him tight, and his mind was filled with pleasant memories of his youth, his first kiss, his first love, his family, and his favourite foods. 
There was laughter, kind laughter, children's laughter, joy, a warmth he had known only rarely. And then there was nothing at all. From the booth, Dr. Stanford watched the man suffer while SCP-999 tried to comfort him. Evidently, a strong-willed person could prevent a takeover from SCP-035. Of course, in this case, it did take the help of another anomaly to do so. Interesting. The man suddenly grew still. SCP-999 released him and began nuzzling at his arms, trying to awake him from his sleep. The man would not wake up. Bless its little soul, thought Dr. Stanford. And then suddenly Dr. Stanford's pity turned to concern as he saw SCP-999 approaching SCP-035. Containment teams, get in there now! It was going to destroy it. It was going to pick it up and break it on the floor. It would smash it to powder. It felt hate for the first time, an emotion completely alien to it. That man wanted freedom. He wanted to live. He'd still had his mind and in his final moment he had heard him beg him to keep him alive, to give him the chance to say sorry to his wife and give his daughter all the love he could. This thing knew all that. It had been in his mind and still it just wanted to control and torture and kill and discard. This thing was evil. There can only be one answer to that. SCP-999 wasn't sure if it could do this, but something had to stop this evil thing. And so, as the men rushed into the testing chamber, a shatter of porcelain was heard. There lay the mask, shattered in two, its expression locked in fear and the acid no longer flowing. SCP-999 had done something that so far it hadn't done in its entire existence. It took the life of something. Yet what was even more surprising was that it felt no hint of remorse. The mask deserved it after all, right? It never cared about others, it just always wanted people to help it for its own gain. It didn't deserve mercy. The guards. Was that fear it could see under their visors? I can conclude that SCP-035 is inactive. I am unsure if placing the mask pieces together would fix SCP-035, and given the benefits of not doing so, I am reluctant to try. I am also unsure if SCP-035 should now be reclassified as a Maxa class anomaly or as a neutralized class anomaly. I would advise we keep the parts separate from each other until a decision can be made to address these concerns. I suggest that discussions and votes should be held as to what should be done next. As a final note, while it sustained no physical damage, Staff have noticed some minor changes in SCP-999's behavior. Additional observation and testing is advised to ascertain what happened to SCP-999. And that concludes this cross encounter between 999 and 035. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to like and subscribe if you did. And thank you to Sleeper Labeef, Cadet Catboy, Matthias Deflethorium, Luna Wilson, Guardian of Energy, Razman, Splendy the Tear God, Number of the East, Wings of a Meme, Rick Traxon. Big thanks to the council members, Tyson, Dr. Nightwraith, Detex, Bane, your local foundation agent, Kickerin, Tree, Hunter Killer, Captain Core, and Kibara. And huge thanks to the administrators, Afray Interactive, Techno Ninja, GFHD, Infinite Tune, Kamana, Vaya, and Andre Bashert. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all soon. And take care.